there's big controversy in the natural health world about stevia and infertility. So let's really jump on that. So the Mato Grosso Indians in Puragai were would drink stevia leaf tea and and you know according to them in their culture they would drink extra amounts high amount like a lot of stevia leaf uh, tea if they wanted to reduce fertility for women right so if women didn't want to have any more babies they would drink a lot of that and so based on that based on that you know anecdotal story of that tribe, I think it is wise that we actually test, does stevia cause infertility? And that was first done by Professor Kruk, 1968 at Purdue University. And he showed that very high amounts, he gave rats very high amounts of stevia, thousands of times higher than what you would normally consume on a, on a, you know, for when it's adjusted for weight for a human, showed infertility, right? That they had less offspring than the control group that did not have high amounts of stevia consumption. So that was the original study. Since then, there have been a whole bunch of other studies that have not shown, that have not been able to replicate the findings in that study until 1991. And that is where Professor Mauro Alvarez out of Brazil, he gave high amounts of stevia to female mice and showed that they were less fertile. And so those are the only two studies actually that I've ever shown it. They're both animal studies done on rats. Other studies that have tried to reproduce those results, have not shown any sort of uh, change in fertility levels. And there's a lot of criticisms. If when you really look at these studies, a lot of criticisms in how both Professor Kruk and Professor Moro Alvarez's studies um, had their initial findings. And so very important to understand, Professor Kruk actually, he said, I think it was because of toxicity levels. I gave them so much that it was probably a toxic effect. And when it comes to almost any herb, any any sort of natural compound, you can take too much, right? Um, I mean, things like even like magnesium, if you take too much, you get loose stools, right? You don't feel good. You can get nausea, vomiting. So almost any sort of nutrient or any sort of plant compound, can there can be a toxic dose. That's what Professor Kruk's and Professor Alvarez's hypothesis was as they looked at the study and the other studies. Now, 1999, a Thailand study, they looked at hamsters, they gave them 2,500 milligrams a day of stevia, or roughly the equivalent of what, what a human would consume as 2,500 milligrams uh, a day of stevia. Now the average dose for Americans, roughly about two milligrams, right? If you get 10 milligrams in a day, that's a lot of stevia that you consume. So you would never get 2,500 milligrams in a day. And even at that level, they actually didn't show any infertility effects on the hamsters. So even at a super high level. So um, perhaps the toxicity level for rats different than the toxicity level for hamsters, right? And maybe hamsters have a better buffering system where they don't have quite the same toxic effects at a high dose that rats do. So we, we don't fully understand that. But another study, 2008 Journal of Endocrinology and Reproduction, volume 12, they looked again um, at rats and they found no adverse effects when they were doing, even at higher doses or at least human higher doses, they showed no adverse effects. And so there's been no human studies that have shown infertility effects. So it really just comes from what the Mato Grosso Indians did with stevia leaf tea. And then two studies, right? 1968, 1991 studies. And because of those studies, the FDA has said, we can't approve stevia as a safe natural sweetener. Obviously it's approved for sale. They just don't list it in the approved non-caloric natural or non-caloric sweeteners. They don't call it natural, but non-caloric dietary sweeteners. And that would be where they have things like aspartame, Splenda, asphaltane potassium, a lot of the things that in the natural health world we really look down on that actually have a lot of studies showing detrimental effects, adverse effects from consuming things like aspartame, Splenda, um, things like asphaltane potassium, monosodium glutamate, things like that. There's a lot of studies showing negative effects, and yet those are approved by the FDA. The FDA is not approved stevia. They say that we don't have enough studies to prove that it doesn't cause problems with fertility, with kidney issues, with a number of different, different issues. And so they're saying we need more studies. I recommend we get more studies, but I will tell you just as an anecdotal effect, my wife and I, we used stevia. We used it you know, before we had kids. We used it 
while we were in the process of having children, we had no effect, it had no impact on us when it came to our fertility levels. We continue to use it. I feel great using it. So I think the general advice with this is, if you feel good using Stevia, like if you feel good, you don't feel inflamed when you're using it, you feel like it doesn't increase the amount of cravings that you're, that you're having, that you feel mentally clear using it, then you can use it and enjoy it. Okay, and I think that that's great. It's great to have a good natural sweetener that you can enjoy. However, if you're noticing that you have more inflammation, that you just don't feel as good, when you're consuming it, you may have a sensitivity to it or an allergy. And that's where it could cause infertility. If you're somebody that has a ragweed sensitivity or allergy, and you're consuming stevia, that may trigger autoimmunity. It may trigger more inflammation and perhaps autoimmunity to, for males to their sperm cells, for females to their, their eggs, and that could cause infertility. So the, the, the end or the conclusion of this is stevia for most people is not going to increase infertility based on the level of evidence we have today. But for a very small percentage of people that have a ragweed allergy or sensitivity, it may very well cause infertility or just increase inflammation, unwanted health effects. Usually, most of the time, if you're noticing more inflammation, like if you consume something that you're sensitive to in isolation, or um, if you're consuming that and you're noticing repeated bouts of inflammation where you just don't feel as good, you feel more mentally sluggish, lower energy, more pain, maybe skin issues, um, maybe having to clear your throat a lot when you, after you consume this, then that's probably a good indication that you're having a sensitivity, it's driving up inflammation in your body, it's probably affecting other areas of your body outside of just where you're noticing the symptoms. And if that's the case with stevia, then you'll wanna avoid it. Outside of that, if you feel good when you're consuming it, I would recommend you continue to consume it um, as long as, again, keeping an eye to make sure that you're not noticing any increase in inflammation, increase in cravings, um, lower energy, right? All these unwanted symptoms. Mm -hmm.